Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Peggy, English lecturer at Uskuda University. Uh, welcome back to my lesson. So let's go for another lesson. So, uh, as you know, uh, today we are going to talk about um, your main course, which is in Power B1, Unit 11, page uh, 107 to 116, the Richmond level. First of all, I'm going to talk about clause. So what is clause? Clause is a group of words containing a verb. Then, what is relative clauses? So we use relative clauses to describe or give extra information about something we have already mentioned. Relative clauses starting with the relative pronouns. So what are relative pronouns? Who, which, where, when, and that. These words are relative pronouns. This information or description might be about a person, thing, place, event, or etc. So, obviously when we are talking about people or a person, the word who comes to our mind. When we talk about a time or a day or a date, the word when comes to our mind. When we are talking about a place, the word where comes to our mind. And when we are talking about things, the options, this one or that one, the word which comes. Now, we are talking about types of relative clauses. Definitely, we have two groups of relative clauses. Number one is defining relative clauses, and number two is non-defining relative clauses. So, by the way, what is defining relative clause? Let's see. Defining relative clauses give information to define or identify the person or thing we are talking about. Look at that example. Dogs that like cats are very unusual. So, obviously we have many different dogs around the world. There are many dogs in the world. But are we talking about all of them? No way. We are talking about the ones that like cats, which is something unusual. So we are giving more information, or I can say we are defining it. Look at here. The first picture, somebody is buying a car, obviously. Second picture shows that car is very fast. So, we can use defining relative clauses to join two English sentences. Sentence number one, I bought a new car. Sentence number two, it is very fast. We are going to uh, join these two sentences to make one. I bought a new car that is very fast. Imagine, I 
have two hands, this one can be sentence number one, this one can be sentence number two. How can I join them? I need something which we call it relative pronouns. We need a tool. I can join my hands with my fingers to make a bridge. Here we use um, relative pronouns to join two sentences. Keep these things in your mind. We are not allowed to leave the pronouns out. Let's go for one example. We had fish and chips, which I always enjoy, which is relative pronouns. So can I delete it? No way. So we are not allowed to do that. We had fish and chips, I always enjoy. It is completely wrong. Defining relative clauses. Some examples. Children who hate chocolate are uncommon. So, are we talking about whole children around the world? No. We are talking about a group of children who hates the chocolate. Next one. An elephant is an animal that lives in hot countries. We are defining elephant. Let's go to a country where the sun always shines. We are talking about, we are giving more information about that country. So, now it's your turn. As your homework, please rewrite the sentences and send them to your teachers. They will check your sentences and give you the feedback for sure. So be careful, this is your homework. Don't forget it. Now I'm going to talk about non-defining relative clauses. As defining relative clauses describe the clause, describe a thing, describe a person, and give more information, non-defining relative clauses are giving you some extra information which is not necessary. They tell us more about someone or something, but the information in these clauses does not help us to define what we are talking about. So look at that example of non-defining relative clause. Gorillas, which are large and originated in Africa can sometimes be found in zoos. So, in this sentence we are talking about all gorillas, not just some of them. We are talking about all of them. So, the sentence, the non-relative, uh, the non-defining uh, relative clause, which is between two commas, is not necessary. We call it unnecessary information. So let's go for another example. John's mother, comma, who lives in Scotland, has six grandchildren. Okay, John's mother, comma, who lives in Scotland, comma again, has six grandchildren. What about this one? I have deleted a part of a sentence. John's mother has six grandchildren. Is it wrong, you think? No way. So what about this one? Gorillas can sometimes be found in zoos. Again, I have deleted a part of this sentence. So tell me, is this sentence wrong grammatically? 
No, it's not wrong. So look at these three statements. <clears throat> this sentence would still be grammatically correct. The meaning would not have changed. We would have less detail. So be careful. It is grammatically correct. The meaning didn't change. But we have the short sentence. So now we don't have any extra information or let's say any unnecessary information. So we have some more examples. Read the examples and just let me know if they are defining relative clauses or non-defining relative clauses. He gave me the letter which was in a blue envelope. Yes, is it defining or non-defining? Yes, it is non-defining. Why? Because there was only one letter. It happened to be blue. So, if I say he gave me the letter, again the sentence can be correct. What about this one? He gave me the letter which or that was in a blue envelope. Yes, defining. Why? Because it seems there were several letters of different colors and he gave me the blue one. Look at here. We can replace which with that as well. So, if I say he gave me the letter which was in a blue envelope, or <clears throat> if I say he gave me the letter that was in a blue envelope, both are correct. Next one. He gave me the letter which I read immediately. What about this one? Non-defining or defining? All right, non-defining. Why? Because it seems there was only one letter, which is the object of read. Now here we go. We are going to talk about punctuation, comma, which is the most, one of the most important parts. So can you guess when and where we can use commas, non-defining relative clauses or defining relative clauses. Let's see. Commas are always used to separate non-defining relative clauses from the rest of the sentence. Let's have a look on examples. My grandmother, comma, who's dead now, came from the north of England. So what if I delete who is dead now? My sentence will change to my grandmother came from the north of England. So again, it is meaningful, grammatically correct, with a less detail. Next one. My grandfather, who's 87, goes swimming every day. Look at the commas, before and after the non-defining relative clause. What if I delete who's 87? So the sentence changed to my grandfather goes swimming every day. So again, the sentence is meaningful, grammatically correct, with less detail. So here we go, we are, I, I, I don't know, I copy uh, two links from the YouTube. Please copy them in um, Google. Watch the videos, they are very interesting videos. You can have fun and learn lots of things. We have some statements here 
we're going to check them together and find if they are correct or wrong. Let's go for the first one. Relative clauses describe or give extra information about something. What do you think? Is it correct? Are we having uh, some extra information or description when we are using relative clauses? Let's see. Yes. Next one. We use relative pronouns like which, that, who, and where at the beginning of a relative clause. So. What is your answer? Yes, correct. Some relative clauses give additional information which is not essential for understanding. It means they are not necessary. They are unnecessary. They are extra information. Yeah, if you remember, we talked about it in non-defining relative clauses. So, yes. And the last one, the punctuation is different from defining and non-defining clauses. It means in non-defining relative clauses, we had commas before and after the non-defining relative clauses. So the last one is correct as well. So here we have some exercise. You have to fill in the blanks. As you see, the answer key is here as PDF. Please fill in the blanks, then share them with your teachers. Also, you can uh, check the answer key to find the correct answer. So, as a conclusion, let's review of the unit. So we talk about clause, which we said it is a combination of a group of, or a group of words with verbs. We talked about relative clause. A relative clause give us some information or define or identify thing, people, person, or etc. We talked about relative pronouns, which were who, which, where, and the rest. We talked about types of relative clauses, like defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. We talked about defining relative clause, which gives us some more information about a person, about thing, also about a place and a time as well. We had some examples. I shared some homeworks. Then we went to non-defining relative clauses, which gave, gave us some unnecessary information, some extra information, which if we delete them, the meaning, the grammar didn't change. So it means the grammatically it is true and it is still meaningful, but with less detail. We had some examples. We talked about punctuation in relative, uh, defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. Also, you had homework. Please do the homework and share them with your teachers. And please check the YouTube videos. So this is the end of the unit 11. Stay home. Good luck and enjoy your life. See you next time. Thank you.